Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the World Delta Podcast. Today with me I have David Zuniga. Is that how you say your last name? David Leiton Zuniga, yes. Uh, and yeah. we're going to have a very nice conversation today. We spoke a few months ago and you were about to make a very nice transition in your life and you did it. Now you are in Bali and we're going to just talk about that move, uh, your job in Mind Valley, your journey until this point. And yeah, so why don't you tell a little bit more about yourself and yeah, your background and just shoot. 100%. Um, so I am from Nicaragua. Um, and for the past three years, or five years, actually, I've been out of the country, you know, just doing a lot of things. Um, the last out of which the last three I was in Mind Valley, which is a company that um, basically does or teaches everything that school should have taught you or taught you, but didn't. So whoever taught you about meditation, whoever taught you about relationships or entrepreneurship and things like this, right? And we do this through a different set of means or um, mediums, such as online courses or webinars and even events. Um, and what I was doing in particular was product development. So I took basically, we, we work kind of like an online publishing company. So we work with authors on those fields that want to be published by us. Um, you know, it's actually funny because I still say us and I'm not even working with them anymore, yeah. not full time at least, um, but you know, three years. And, um, so, uh, we work with these authors and these several fields. And what I did specifically was product development, which was um, taking taking the idea of a course um, from point A to point Z. So, you know, we see a need in the market. We say, hey, people want to learn about public speaking or people want to learn about meditation. You know, what, what kind of course could we build? We, I was a person who would basically got in contact with the authors and say, Hey, what, do you, what have you got to offer and in this field? Um, we would have this internal communication of what is it that the author can deliver. And then, um, I would condense this into curriculum, um, course creation basically. Um, and then take that same course throughout the whole course creation process. So, um, from conception of, Hey, I want to create this type of course into filming production. Um, that meant, you know, I was just a couple of months ago, um, in Barcelona, um, working to film one of these courses. Um, and then once we have these courses filmed, we go and take them into post production and to, uh, up until when it's actually uploaded into our platform. So yeah. that's more or less what I did. Okay. So you like your day to day, like work environment will be, uh, speaking with clients and then taking those ideas, making it in like more of a written form. And then, uh, so you will be present throughout the whole process. Yeah, I would. So I would normally work on two projects or three at the same time. So my day to day basically dependent on the stage of the project, uh, where I, that I was working on. So at one point I was working on post-production, say for example, a blog course, but then uh, and the next day I would be working on stage one of, of a different course, which would normally be research or communication with an author, brainstorming about what kind of course we want to build, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and yeah, that's more or less it. So that's, that's what I was doing. But like, just like you mentioned, I was, you know, just a couple of months ago when we, when we first met, I was going through this a bit of a journey and, um, and it's, and it's actually an accumulation of a big journey that's been happening over the t almost 10 years now since I've been into personal growth yeah, so, and uh, this so, so yeah go ahead before we go into your recent uh, move or recent change in your life so uh, you you are from Nicaragua and um, and you would you say that it started there that journey of self-development or only started when you went to Mind Valley and start seeing all this different type of content and meditation and self-development or did it start before no it started way before um almost well way before i had them <laughs> nine ten years ago more or less 
Um, I it started it started out um, around my last years of, of college. Obviously, with it's a love story, like every single story <laughs> that's worth telling. It's beautiful. Tell I was um, I was like yeah, a hundred percent. I was like um, um, super hooked up into this girl, like, and uh, she wouldn't like me, obviously. Of course, <laughs> and then, um, like every single story, right? Um, it's, there's a bit of a hero journey in there, in which um, I come from this like little town, and I go and face my fears, and then I, I, I first, uh, my first kind of like personal growth um, journey that I had was just getting out of my shell, you know, stop being freaking shy around women. Um, and that lasted, I don't know, it lasted for a while, I guess. Um, but that particular period, that first seed, you know, that first plant, it was, you know, and I guess that a lot of your audience relates to this, especially when you're a, a young guy, you know, like the first thing you're thinking of is women, is girls, you know? Yeah. And it's that's a, actually a huge outlook, you know? And, and it's an awesome catalyst. And, and, and it's, and it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's why I like that first journey of mine. It's because it, it obviously took me into, um, bigger realms outside just like dating and all that stuff um and uh that's kind of like a, how i got into all of these things yeah it's, <laughs> it's so interesting I, I i'm starting to formulate a theory about uh how guys get into this and the last episode with anthony it was exactly the same thing with you again the same thing so it feels like <laughs> it's like a nice way to get into this so girls or being shy or anxiety kind of is how we got into that necessity of needing more. And it's very interesting. I mean, I never really talked about this to anyone that got into self-development and now two guests and exactly the same or variations of it. So women or just the need to get out of your shell, as you said. It's yeah, super absolutely, man. But then that also took me into a second journey, which was um, I basically became the opposite of what I was. And, you know, looking back, um, I it, 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 I went to a journey, which I, I, I don't want to be the I, I became a person that at this point, I don't want to I didn't like. Um, so, you know, you probably heard about Neil Strauss and you've read the, the game or you, you, if you've yeah. actually followed his um, his path. Like I really resonate with it because he wrote the truth a couple of like 10 years after almost. And if you read that, it, it's a book about a coming of age and you know, of realizing that everything that he had done before was just like just a, a way to feel a hole within, within himself and that he was actually not being whole as a person. And that's kind of like how I felt as well, because I, I just was, you know, I got into that journey, but I was, what I realized back then is that, or what I realized now is that I was just trying to fill a bunch of holes that I had inside me. Um, but then when I filled them, I wasn't really acting as a whole person. I was just being like, um, you know, you actually recently made a, a video about um, how the ego is the enemy, right? It's yeah. it's more or less like that. I was that, you know, cocky 25 year old <laughs> with a bunch of freaking ego and just like treating people badly and just like not not nice. Um, and I think that's that's actually when my second journey started. So like getting it fr back from that darkness or that hole and so how did you what were you consuming any type of content or uh, was mainly uh, like pick up girls and the, the, the game and you think that made you turn around and flip the coin and instead of being shy, being a little bit mm -hmm. like too cocky? How did well, that yeah, I happen? guess that, I guess, so I'll take it, I'll rephrase your questions, not rephrase it, but basically what I'm into a lot right now, it's, you know, going this back to being me when I was back when I was like a kid. Um, who was I when I was a kid? You know, I was a kid who was like loved dogs and was like super cheerful and I loved people and just like really, really, really kind. And, you know, maybe I wasn't very much aware of that when I was like 25 and cocky and all that, but I, there was definitely something inside me that said, this is not me. It doesn't feel and right. that started exactly. And that started coming across a lot when, you know, I got into relationships 
And I would want to, have, of course, be in a relationship and have the relationship flourish and all that. But um, it always just not worked out for me, um, despite the fact that that's actually what I wanted. And uh, and it, 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 there was also always something that was like, you know, this doesn't feel right, like you just said. Um, so more than I think content, it was just a, a, a big game of that's when I started getting really big on self-awareness, um, and knowing yourself and all this because, and following what your like intuition is saying, right. Yeah. Um, because I started realizing that this was not me and, and this was actually, it's not like, obviously it was like a, a one thing, um, yeah. journey. Like it took a, a lot of self-reflection and a lot of relationships as well to actually, you know, figure that out. Um, and not, I'm not saying that I got there. You never actually never get there. You yeah. know, there's no destination towards this, but it's definitely been a good journey so far. Yeah. At least, at least now you are aware of it. You know, you know that you can change because I think it's a lot of the process of you just, uh, have all these problems that you don't think that are problems that just because you are not aware of it, I think Alan Watts talks about this where, how can you improve or this idea of self-improvement is a little bit flawed because if you are trying to improve yourself, how do you know? That, that means you're flawed. Yeah. yeah. How do you know what you need to improve? Because you are the one that needs to be improved. So it's kind of this, uh, yeah, dilemma. Paradox. Yeah. Paradox where yeah. you need to have that awareness to come to that realization but also you need to get to the point where you are reading uh, or exposing yourself to different contents where you can make that that shift in your because i do i do think that's binary you know that you feel like at least understanding that oh shit i need to improve on this thing and and then you slowly in your head uh, start to fixing those problems at least 100%. it was a little bit for me like that. So I would say for you to get uh, out of that mode, it was just realizing it and just in your head with time, kind of slowly fixing yourself and your internal conversation. Or was it that a, diff a book or something that helped you to get out of or is helping you? Yeah. Right. So um, I'm obviously write certain books, uh, of course. Um, but more than that, I think it's because there's a side to everything. There's two sides to everything, right. Or personal growth. It's number one, um, my old boss, boss vision would divide it into models of reality and systems of living, which is basically in a, in a sense, it's mindset, uh, or beliefs and habits, right? So what is, what is the mindset behind it? Um, and what are the systems and the habits that I can put in place? to implement whatever mindset you've decided to, to take on. And, you know, I, I think I, I read a lot of books, obviously they gave me specific um, systems or habits to, you know, get better as a person in general, but at the biggest mindset, um, and looking back right now that I think that helped me get there was just a, a, it's a mindset of, um, execution and self-reflection, which uh, I'm also really big at. I, I like, I like talking a lot about in my, in my content. I actually have a, a video series right now, which is called what I've learned, right? Which is exactly just, you know, executing things and then thinking back every single day, I do journaling, I reflect back on what I learned. Um, and this allows me to just continuously learn, uh, but it's, it's gotta be something that has to be really, really intentional. Like, it's not like, Oh, what did I learn today? Or, you know, like, think about it. Like I actually dedicate literally sometimes it's about two hours a day, um, one hour, one hour journaling in the morning and then 40, 30, 40 minutes at night, just looking back, to, um, through, through the day. And that act of, um, it's a loop, right? You execute, you, you go and do things like, Hey, you know, I'm a cocky guy. So what do I need to do? Or, you know, I I'm being cocky in this relationship, you know, what, what should I fix? Um, and then reflect on it. And sometimes obviously this isn't, this is not like something you, you, you work out in a single day, but you know, over the course of six months of one year, perhaps, you know, you, you start making, you start realizing that there's patterns mm -hmm. and then you start realizing your own hidden beliefs and your own, you know, mindsets in your subconscious that are taking you where things have been taking you. Yeah. So 
to answer your question, I think it's it's more, you know, more than anything in specific is this um is this model of reality, is this belief system that I I I'm very um, introspective about my own thoughts, my own feelings, my all uh, my own decisions every single day, mm. um, and that kind of like you know, after accumulating all of these, I start like navigating, and that's when I start realizing, hey, this is me, this is not me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. So you say that it's more about the internal, a journey of just chewing on a problem, or then actually consuming a lot of self-help and business and whatever books that I also feel like that sometimes that there's a lot of books to read and it's kind of nice to just keep uh, being reliable of that external source to to oh, wow now I will be able to find that book that fixes my problem but most of the times it will be a problem that needs to be addressed on the inside and it's not really anything out that can really make that shift and that gradual uh, yeah step stepping towards something that actually improves you and that's i would say that is the purest form of self-improvement right a hundred percent a hundred percent so just to expand on that like you you said it and and i love books obviously like i i like i read every single day i'm not saying no but um, I think that yeah, one of the questions that I've been asking myself a lot recently is who am I? Um, and, and, you know, this actually, this, this asking this over the course of six months on a daily basis actually got me to where I am right now, Bali. Um, but to, to, to make it short, like, you know, we, are, we all have it from the inside. We, we all have this, like, I think, you know, you mentioned Alan Watts. If you ask if, you ask if Alan Watts was alive and you ask him, who, who, who are we? Who are you? You know, he'd probably say, we're God. And, you know, if we already have that power within us, that means that why look outside if we can just look inside? Um, and I think this is why I'm so big on and, and self-reflecting and, you know, journaling and these things because, like, we really have the potential. Like, it's not just gibberish. It's not just, like, you know, it's not just, like, a sales... Um, um, sales pitch we really do have the potential yeah. so yeah that's why I'm big on these things yeah it was actually that brings me to your latest video so uh, you do videos on on Facebook and the latest one was exploring a little bit about like positive thinking is a little bit of a crap uh, theory and I would say that it's that's a form of reflection where you are talking with yourself but i think it's the the right the the wrong mindset so where you are telling yourself that everything will be okay and i just need to think a certain way and things will be fine just by themselves i don't know how that works um yeah and just accepting reality and dealing with the consequences as they come and i, I would say that is what you're doing so you are going in the world doing your thing whatever it feels right then you go home you actually look at what you did and then you create a nice a positive feedback loop not just positive thinking and because there's a lot of like about the secret and positive thinking and blah blah, blah. it's a lot of just masturbation and you are just in your head just thinking that everything will be fine and it doesn't have any action associated to it and i really prefer a lot your your version is that you're actually going out there and in the real world and you are not just thinking that as you said like unicorns and rainbows <laughs> <laughs> and i really give you props for i arriving to bali and having all these issues with the flights and making a video as soon as you did <laughs> so props <laughs> so yeah man. So, thank you bro <laughs> So let's talk a little bit more about so your move to Bali. So you were in Malaysia and working for Mind Valley, and uh, after three years, you decided to just quit. Well, not fully, but let's say quit and start this new thing. So just tell me more about your thought process. How did you get to that point where you just okay, let's let's do this thing? 
Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm still working more or less as a contract with contractor with them. I I um, do a bit of part time, but the decision came, man. So you know, I told you about how I I've been trying to go back to who I was when I was a kid. Um, and you know, we're working with so many incredible authors. It's, you know, that's one of the things that I loved about the most with my lovey. I would. I, I was I went to three of our big events in Costa Rica and Ibiza and Barcelona Barcelona through a like a period of two two years and met incredible people, like people who are literally changing the world and, and have not just huge followings, but their impact man. And, and and that's just to say to say the authors and also but also working with Vision, um, our CEO, who's now a pretty big authority in the personal growth field. Um, and working with him every single day, literally, and, and seeing him, how he thought and how he worked things out and all that, I, I started feeling like, you know, I, I was, um, I was in the backstage and there was somebody else, you know, up front singing, <laughs> singing and giving, giving the song to everyone. And, um, despite the fact that I loved what I do because I did. Um, and I, the company, you know, you, you are, your audience are interested. It's literally, it's, it's an amazing company. Um, uh, voted like has, we had like one of the top 10 coolest offices in the world. And, you know, we travel great things, you know, but, but I, I started feeling like I was in the backstage and I started feeling like I, I also had something to say. Um, and, and I just, it's not that I couldn't, but you know, why, why spend a hundred or 50% of your time doing it? If you could spend a hundred percent of your time yeah. saying these things, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. And, and to be honest, like I, I, I was really lucky, you know, I, I, like, again, I had so many privileges while working with mind Valley and, um, a lot, a lot, a lot. I, I can't even name them all. Like it's a list, a huge list, but I think that I, it's not like I want it more and need it more, but I think that I could definitely give more, not just to other people, but also to myself. Um, if I dedicated it a hundred percent of my time into, you know, content production and giving out my message. And so I started, I started, you know, it was a, it was a, a bit of a journey. I, I, one of the books that I, that really helped me get here is one called um, Tim Ferriss recommends it. He, he actually that this this set out his morning routine. It's called The Artist Way by Jul Julia Cameron, um, and it's basically it's a book that that teaches your uh, allows you to get your creativity out um, to the world. And you know he she believes and she teaches that we're all born creative. And obviously school or society, your parents and all that. Um, teaches or not to, you know, Ken Robinson teaches that schools kill creativity and that kind of like what happened, that's what kind of like what happened to me, but I always felt like I had an insight, right? So that's when, you know, about six months ago, I started journaling. I think journaling is one of the most transformative, um, habits. Now it's a habit. I do it every single day mm -hmm. that I've acquired like hands down and not even this year, like in years. It's, it's, it's huge. It's, 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 it's transformative. Like it, it, it helped me make the decision. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, I started opening myself to things that I liked in, in the past. Like I, I'm a dancer as well. Um, and you know, salsa? started, started salsa, Latin dance and salsa bachata okay. mostly. Um, and you, you know, these little nuances of being in touch with yourself and being in touch with who you really are as a person, like make you, it's, it makes such a big difference in your soul inside you. You start seeing things differently. Um, because you, you're, you feel like you're being, you're, you're, you're aligned into what you're actually meant to do here on earth. Um, and nothing's, nothing's, uh, nothing is, um, Tony Robbins says that, you know, it, it's like when you're working towards something that pulls you instead of something that you have to push for. There's a huge difference, you know, um, something that pulls you instead of you have to push for work or have to push for, you know, work hard or be good or whatnot. And I felt like all of these things were things that pulled me. I, I didn't even have to make effort, you yeah. know. Um, 
So it, it feels great when you're in this um, kind of like path that just things pull you and it's just like effortless because it's really, it's really coming from a place where it's who you are, you know? Yeah. Um, it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and that's, that's more or less the journey. Yeah. And then <laughs> you just decided I will go to Bali. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I've been here before. It's, it's paradise. It's fucking beautiful. There's a big, um, nomad community here. There's a lot of spirituality here. Um, it's close to Malaysia as well. I can also see friends and, you know, I'm going back in a couple of months already. Mm. Um, and just convenience. It's so many things. And I have a, I have a, bit of a project that I, I can't, dis, I can't, um, talk about publicly yet because okay. I, I don't know if it will actually happen because we'll talk about <laughs> it after the show. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. There's even, there's even, there's even authorities being, <laughs> being involved in this. Okay. So it, it's, it's a bit of a project, right? And this is, I chose Bali because of this project as well. Um, so right now in the meantime, well, like I'm, I'm trying to figure that out if that's going to happen or not. I'm, um, focus on my job as a, you know, as a contractor with Mind Valley, but also the, the video series that are, that I run, uh, what I've learned and writing as well. It's kind of like what I'm into right now. Okay. So you say Bali will be a little bit temporary. Your stay there it will just it will be for your projects or would you. Because I see a lot of YouTubers or bloggers moving to Bali and it's not <clears throat> the first time I see this and I wonder if it's just, I mean, it's, it sounds like paradise and I saw videos and pictures and it sounds like if you can work there and it's cheap and I would also move there, but uh, is it just for convenience or is it something special about the place? Would you feel like... There is something special, 100%. I would recommend people for at least, you know, what I did at the beginning, just travel, just come here and get a sense of it if I liked it. Because I've ha heard about Bali a lot before, um, and that's why I came about two years or a year and a half or so. And, yeah, it's, it's man, it's it's really nice. It's really nice. It's, it's What I like about it is that, you know, I was exposed to a lot of personal growth content while in Mind Valley. Um and uh, I wanted to get a, a bit of a refresh, uh, a new refreshed version of this. Um, I wanted to get exposed to new ideas. And Bali is a, a bit of a spiritual hub. Um, and I'm not 100% woo-woo. I'm not very es esoteric, but yeah. I'm open to it. Um, I'm really open to it. Like, my mom is actually a Buddhist nun. Um, okay. She's the second Buddhist nun in, in all history of Nicaragua. Um so, you know, I, I was exposed to like Eastern, Eastern thought from a very young age. Yeah. And there's a lot of truth in it. Like Buddhism is awesome. Um, and you know, there's a, there's, there's, there's a lot of these little components in Bali. Like, um, yesterday I went to, um, today actually I, I'm planning to go to this like breath work, um, workshop, mm. um, that it's, it's kind of like Wim Hof. Right. And, um, it's, 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 it ba basically teaches you how to get to altered states of consciousness through breathing. Um, and this is, this is all over Bali. Like it didn't like this. There's like 20 different little workshops happening, you know, on Friday, I'm, I'm also going to this thing called ec ecstatic dance, which, uh, you know, just, a, I don't even know what it does, but it sounds interesting, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, this, this this is why I like Bali, basically. And those workshops or those classes are taught by locals or uh, people that are also there uh, to teach. And is it? Yeah, teachers, uh, mostly expats. Um, so the, Bali has been a, a an expat and a nomad community for years now, and 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 I don't know the story, right? But there's like literally, you come here, and half of the population is people like us, you know, yeah. um, we're mostly in a spiritual path. Okay. And so it's, it's, there are teachers, there are teachers who've been doing this for a good amount of years now, 10, 15, whatnot, and are basically based here in Bali. Um, 
and yeah you also have a, <laughs> a nice video about about that that there's a like an there's a lesson behind every well every experience that happens i think you talked about noah's ark and how mm -hmm, people exactly. sometimes uh, disregard these stories and they don't they just uh, because it's cool not to be religious so they just disregard but there's actually a truth behind this uh, any, and you know how i got this approach no. it's really funny because it, it it came through this whole thing about uh pickup and dating dude because um back then real social dynamics and all these people yeah, te yeah. teach about um, Everyone, reference points it's the same thing for every <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, it's the truth, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's like that. And it, it, it comes from this philosophy that you do things just for a reference. Like you don't know if you're basically unattached from the outcome. You don't know if it's going to work. You don't know what's going to happen and all that. You just do it for the reference to see what happens. And that's kind of like how I see a lot of things, actually, you know, is, you know, this, this breath work thing. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to whatever. I'll do it for a reference. You know, there's always something that you can learn um, from everything, you know, and that's kind of like what my video was about, um, the one that you're mentioning. There's, you, you do things and you learn something from it. Yeah. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. I think it feels like Bali is, it's because it's, well, at least will be for me, it's so different that I will have tons of those experiences. And that's a little bit why I, I moved away from my country also, just to have those experiences. And I feel now that I'm getting a little bit too used to life here. And yeah, I'm also been thinking a lot. <laughs> yeah, man. do that. it, bro. Do it. <laughs> there you go. You're, you're so, started with, that's good. You're starting with the, you, you basically, cause I, I the, the content that I'm creating right now, um, I, I talk a lot about follow, following your inclinations, um, you know, and, when you think, you know, when you have something already in the back of your head for a while now, and you just know like, oh, this would be interesting, this would be interesting, you repeat that yourself, that means there's something in there, man. And it doesn't mean that it's going to be the thing that you want, but, you know, you follow that inclination, and then that's going to take you somewhere else, and that's going to take you somewhere else. Yeah. And yes. that's kind of like how you discover, you know, this. Whole, I, I believe passion, you know, following your passion advice is... You know, it's right, but it's not right. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't necessarily agree with it. And I, I like more just following your inclinations and then just execute. And then that's when you see, hey, I like this. And if you don't, you just, you know, steer. Yeah. And that's it. Because there's, yeah, there's that conversation of follow your dreams or follow your purpose. But a lot of people don't have that inner internal drive or that they know what they want to do when they are out of high school and they go to college and, okay, now I'm going to be an engineer. They, I mean, it's rare that someone has at that early because there's no enough reference points, as you were saying, and you, and you just need to go with the flow. Like you need to fix the boat while it's, it's in water. And I think following our purpose, it's a little bit hollow of a advice just because yeah but what's my purpose and and that's i guess a reason or a part of life to discover exactly that and having those moments where you are wondering if you should do it or not i think those are the ones that are really special because it those decision points where the uh, the path diverges that you those moments that you are, you can really set a precedence for you to realize that you have the power of decision. And if you don't do anything, you will live with the consequences. And I think a big motivator is regret. You know, if you go through life and then you'll be like, if I did that, I'll be in a different place, a better place. You never know. Again, another one of your videos, they talk about that, that you if you do a decision then you go back and probably it's not a good or bad decision it's just a decision and yeah i mean props for you for taking that decision and now you need to live with it and it will be fine <laughs> yeah. because it's not as we were also talking about that it's not really a step back 
because there's no such thing as a step back, right? I mean, because it depends exactly. of your your own standards. And if you do this, it's because you feel like you should do it. So in by definition, is a step forward if we want to look at it that way. Yeah, and uh, I, I also think that, you know, if somebody else, if somebody, or if you, or even when I'm in that place where I don't really know what my passion is and all that, I think, man, we, we all, there's always something that we were inclined to that we, yeah. there's always one option and option B, which one are you more inclined to, you know, and it's, it's easy. You just follow your gut feeling, man. It's, that's when you don't know your what your passion is which is normal we, we who knows their life purpose especially when you're 19 20 yeah. whatever i don't know my life purpose you know it's it's a process so what i think it's the best approach is just follow those inclinations those things your gut feeling that tells you okay i have the option of traveling or or maybe not traveling because i'm so cliched um <laughs> maybe you know job a or job b you know choose the one the one that you feel more inclined to yeah. and that's going to take you somewhere but then this is again why reflection is so important because you make that decision is that your life purpose i highly doubt it right you need to re-examine it constantly constantly and this is why i recommend it to do it on a single on a day-to-day -day basis because that way it's going to take you one month three months to realize not three years down the line or yeah. six years down the line when you're in this cubicle and you go like shit my life sucks, you know? Yeah, and I do feel uh, journaling is awesome for that. I don't do it um, every day like you. I I just feel the need to do it if there's like a big mess in my head and I need to just put that mess into words. Just like uh, conscious streaming, you know, just uh, writing as you go without not really thinking about it and just that process of just downloading everything to the page really really helps me to then figure out because there's some things that you cannot really talk to anyone about i think i was thinking about this with a, a friend that she was telling me that she has a problem but she doesn't want to tell me just because it doesn't it's there's no point because mm. it's such so personal so nuanced that it's just it's much better to keep it inside, but still with the journaling, be able to just download it and have it in front of you that you can later on when you are in a different mindset or uh, having a better day or just more reflection that you can do about that, that then you can see it from a different point of view. I think that's, that's journaling is for me worked beautifully. Man, and, and you can do, I well, in Barcelona right now, um, I met this author called Neil Donald Walsh. He wrote um, a book called Conversations with God. It's a huge, huge, huge bestseller. Um, and it's really interesting because what basically he did was, the book is about how he had a conversation with God. And this is a man who basically woke up kind of like enlightened one day and um while writing he realized that he was asking questions and god was answering to him and uh, that might sound a bit crazy but what i've found is that i sometimes i sometimes like journaling when i have a problem i sometimes literally ask myself the question hey i have this problem and how do i solve it and then i write the answer and it's not god <laughs> very unlikely <laughs> right but it's really funny because we were talking about this before. We already have the answer within, and I usually come up with answers, man. And it's and it's and it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. It works. Like it's yeah, I go and write. Hey, fuck. What am I gonna do about this? You're going to do this. <laughs> that's that's literally how it works. And it it and it's probably something that you could already think here, but the magic of writing things down. It's yeah. it's so powerful and it's. Since it's so intuitive, it's just like you don't even think about it. You just you just write, and when you write it down, you realize that fuck, that's really what's inside me. That's really the the, the answer that I it really comes from me. So it's all journaling. Journaling it's also good for that exactly for for all of us who are confused about 
problems or have very specific problems and want to solve them you know i yeah. write them problem so, then answer <laughs> so you you dedicate like you purposely sit down and just do this for let's say an hour yeah okay in the morning I, my morning routine yeah I'll, I'll tell you my morning routine because i recently like finally finally um like nailed it down for the past maybe three four months and this is the best morning routine since i've had ever and i'm really really like liking it a lot um it, it's 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 composed of i guess mm, things that i learned learned from three people gary keller which is the author of the one thing um then getting things done by david allen um well actually my boss also vision with the six face meditation and journaling i don't know so the basically the point is the following um oh and deep work as well okay um yeah so i basically wake up i normally what i would i, I started out going into deep work and or focus and and that deep work usually meant um something that i was really looking forward to such as um basically meditating or working out or journaling that didn't work out because that was not the most important thing obviously um those are the things that i wanted that i looked for the most but were not necessarily the most important thing so that's where the one thing comes in the one thing is that one thing such that by doing it everything else is um easier or unnecessary okay. so i it's putting stephen covey talks about this putting things first first things yeah. first, first, things first um, yeah. and it's basically you know i literally i barely do anything else for the maybe stretch a bit actually do that i i so let's decompose it start over i wake up i go and i have a pool next uh, outside my hostel here so i go i go into the sun i stretch tim ferris does tells you this do 10 things um um 10 things 10 times so i do 10 push-ups 10 10 squats okay and then um 12 uh 10 i try to do 10 second hands then okay um then that takes me like five minutes uh that's really good because i you know i get blood in my system it's moving i i don't know it just wakes me up, to wake up. and i also take sun i just i love taking sun then you know by minute 20 maybe minute, minute 30 um depends on how sleepy i am i go into deep work so i put my timer uh, I use toggle, which is, you know, just like productivity tool. Yeah. And then I time normally between, um, deep work. He recommends four hours. So I don't go that, you know, hardcore. I do between one hour and 30 minutes to two hours and 30 minutes. Um, and then what I do during that deep work is basically the one thing. So what is the one thing that such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary. So for me, that usually is my uh, work with Mind Valley, because very simple. That's what um, keeps me alive right now. Yeah, what brings the bacon in? Yeah, you know that made this life exactly, and that's where you know in the morning it's not very hard to do it because you know willpower is the highest in the morning. Yeah. Um, so I just literally go into work mode. I don't have any troubles with it. Um, and then what I do then as a reward for spending time, um, during the, you know, the deep work is that I start doing my journaling. So okay. journaling is only a reward system for, you know, putting in deep work. And I think the, the last thing that I learned recently is that I was still having work troubles doing deep work because there were honestly times in which the deep work in, involved doing things that I didn't like. Um, we were just uh, talking off camera that I don't like video editing or that it's a bit uh, for me. Um, so what I, what I learned is that it's very easy because all I needed to do was dissociate deep work from, or, or, you know, the fulfillment, um, emotion from, I, dis I dissociated from the task itself and I associated to deep work. So my motivation okay. is not to do whatever task, you know, I'm not going to, I don't wake up in the morning and I'll go, Hey, I'll do video editing today. That's bullshit. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm never going to get motivated by that. What I go is that, Oh, today I'll do deep work, you know, and you just keep it and like that. Yeah. Because it, it's easy that, that, that I find that motivate deep work is my most two, the, the, the most two productive hours I have in the day. And I like feeling 
like my fulfillment of the day comes from being productive. Mm. And, you know, by me associating, you know, um, fulfillment to deep work makes it much easier to motivate myself and stay on deep work. Yeah. Would, um, you, would you say that in the beginning when you started this uh, routine, were you doing already the two hours or would you start, did you start gradually? I mean, I'm asking this because when you start, it's kind of, well, like a habit or with deep work is also like a muscle, you know, like you need to keep working on it. Did it gradually increase or do you set up like, okay, two hours and you just committed that during these two hours for the next uh, three or four months, I will just stick to it and eventually I will just get more productive and do more in those in that time? Um, so that's a good question. I don't know why I chose two hours. I, I could probably, now that you say so now start, I could focus more. I could probably do more than two hours. Um, I don't know. I normally, that's a great question. I don't know how to answer it. I just do two hours. Maybe it's a, it's, I could do more. You're right. Um, I also look forward to journaling, <laughs> to be honest. Like there's a point in which like, oh, I want to journal, I want to journal or yeah. So I guess that I get a bit impatient. Um, okay. And you, you, yeah. while you were doing all of this, you are, um, in a fasted mode. So you didn't eat or did you, do you eat something? I fast, I fast. Um, okay. it's not really a habit nor a system. I'm experimenting, um, by it. I, in Malaysia and, and Indonesia are Muslim countries, so it's it's not even like a oh fasting because it's yeah. like part of the culture, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So um, I I'm interested by it, and you know, right now I I just do it without any food, okay. and that's actually why it plays really really well with journaling because I like journaling after eating um, because I. I'm not doing, I can't do much, right? Well, I'm eating, so I'm like writing and eating at the same time. Mm. Um, so yeah, that kind of like plays out well. Do you feel like fasting, like a fasted mode helps you concentrate? So I'm not the best case study because I haven't really implemented it a hundred percent, but yes. And what I've tried the most that I've fasted is 24 hours. Okay. Um, and I personally found it really, really easy. I, and I, and I work out and I, I I'm somebody who actually eats a lot. Mm. Um, and I found it not even hard 24 hours and I liked it. I liked it a lot. This is why I'm, I'm, I'm keen on doing more of it. I just really don't want to recommend anything because I haven't yeah. really like tried that that much. So you, while you were in that 24 hour period, you were still going to the gym and working out. No, no, that's a good question. I, I didn't work out that day. Okay. I didn't do heavy exercises. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I yeah. did experience just with intermittent fasting and I felt, I, I really loved it. I was also working out in the morning usually and in that fasted mode and doing heavy squats, heavy deadlifts, everything. And it really surprised me how the body can take it, you know, because you usually think, oh, I need some food because I'm going to work out. I need the energy. But yeah. the body is really amazing, and it, yeah, it, it you st in you stay in this mode like alertness mode, uh, and it makes you more, yeah, active and more, which is kind of uh, counterintuitive, right? Because if you don't have food, uh, you should be a little bit less energy, but it's not not like that. It's the opposite. It's yeah, really interesting. I wanted to experience it more in the morning to like how it works with productivity and but I never really only in terms of exercise and really helped me a lot but I have friends that they tried and they almost passed out in the gym mm. so I guess it's not for mm. everyone mm. so again mm. I don't want to recommend yeah. anything yeah what, what I personally liked is that um, I usually get like the afternoon down um, because I, I, I used to eat really heavy in the afternoon and a lot, a lot of carbs and that yeah. i don't know if that was a cost i don't know the exact science i'm not an expert on it but i did the, the the end of the matter is that i did feel down you know and uh with fasting 
again, I don't know what the science is. I'm not the expert, but I did experience lightness and I never get that. I am usually like 4 PM till 6, 7 PM. I'm like dead as fuck. Like I can't do shit. I'm, I'm, I normally actually back then I used to nap a lot because I just wasn't productive. Yeah. Um, so with, with, I've found that fasting has helped me stay, stay well, basically dur- during the afternoons. Yeah. 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 It really helps the motivation to get to just do more because again, you are not dependent on foods and it feels kind of nice just because of that, you know, feeling that empowerment that you are not, uh, yeah, dependent of having that coffee or having that sugar rush to keep going. And uh, yeah, it's been it's interesting. I would like to do a video about it eventually. <laughs> you can do the editing. 100%. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> yeah, so Deal. A little bit more about your content because you are making videos on, on Facebook. So now the question yes. is, when is the YouTube channel coming <laughs> that's a great question i i will actually uh make one um the thing is that i think we've talking about this before i as a platform and i really like facebook um and the short answer is you know you can post a youtube uh, a video on youtube and man the people who are going to see it i don't even know who they are yeah. and the comments that they put like great oh x K five thousand said this. Yeah, I can't engage there. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So whilst on Facebook is social, man, it's it's social. I I I do videos and I'm doing them for my friends and I see my friends liking and commenting and that these people mean something for me. They're not X K five thousand, right? They actually mean something for me. Um, and the fact that you know I'm providing somehow value through either entertainment or you know wisdom or whatnot i I like that i like that and the fact again that i can engage with them and i know who they are it's just such a big difference um it's the same reason why you know instagram dming is big because fuck you can contact gary v and he can reply to you and you know that's huge that's obviously in a bigger scale you know but it's it's the same reason so i i do content on mostly on facebook because of that but how, having that said, though, for reference, I'll do it for reference. I'll open up a YouTube a YouTube account for reference and see what happens. Um, yeah, but I do yeah. feel your your style of videos fits really well on on Facebook because then there's again yeah. the, like each platform is not it's a little bit different, and uh, you will have to adjust your videos for for YouTube. Yeah. But I mean, if you yeah. are growing on Facebook and you feel like you are providing value, I, I guess that's that's perfect. I mean, that's that's the reason, right? No, you're right. You, you said it exactly because I actually do plan to make um, longer content now that I have more time. Um, so that's also one of the reasons why I open up, I want to open up a YouTube um, account because I I will start doing five to ten minute videos as well, which is works a uh, uh, well on, on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I yeah. Okay. So, more videos to come. And how do you get into the the topics? Do you have like a list of things you want to cover, or it's just more about what you are going through right now, and you just sit down and make a video about it? Yeah. So both, because, you know, in life, you're going through so many things. It's, it's not like one, the one topic that I spoke on a video is not like the only thing that I'm going through in my life. Um, yeah. so I do, I do normally talk about the things that I'm, that are most current to me, but I also have a backlog. So, um, you know, the, the idea, for example, the idea of episode number 10 that's coming out this Sunday, it's, uh, I got it like, um, actually at the same time that, I started doing episode nine. Um, so I basically have a list of things I write. Oh, I have this idea. I want to talk about this. I write it down and I don't think about it. I just let it sit there. Mm. And then when the time comes, I revisit it and go, huh, how can I, you know, talk about this and all that. Um, and then when, when the usual, when, when the video comes, um, 
I normally don't do scripts. I I do scripts, but actually what I start doing is because they're, they're all short menu, uh, short videos, right? They're one, all of them are one and a half minute um, long, more or less. And what I usually do is that I just start recording, um, see how that goes. And that's usually a very, very, very rough draft of what the video, the final video looks like. And so the first try it might be like four minutes long, you know? Mm. Um, and then I usually, I'm, and then I usually replay it and then I go like, okay, I like this. I don't like this. Um, and then I just start, um, you know, working towards it. Yeah, Some, sometimes I do sense. it in three, four. Yeah. Sometimes I actually, my first video is really funny because I do it and I did it in my second take, okay. which was pretty crazy considering it's my second video, my first video. Um, there's video stuff that took me like eight takes, nine takes, 10 takes because I, I just didn't know how to condense the idea. Like I had like started at first off with like a four minute. Then the second one was like a two minute, uh, like the fifth one, but I just couldn't make it into a one minute and a half. So yeah. that's when I started to, okay, if I can't make it shorter, that's when I start writing things down and I cut here and I cut there and all that, um, things like that. Do you, do you feel like the videos also more than helping others? They are more for you. Like, I mean it that. This way, you actually just like journaling, you are putting these ideas into speech and kind of making them in such a way that are shareable. So they need to be tight and precise and to the point. Would you feel that? Because I feel that with my videos a lot where more than giving advice because I want others to think that I'm doing this thing and I'm better than them, I'm more giving the advice for myself and just getting to the point where I can share these ideas. And I, I wonder if it's the same. A hundred percent, man. And it most more than that, I think for me, it's also internalizing it because like we all read things and, you know, we all learn things, but teaching is the best way of learning, you know? Yeah. Um, and I usually, I usually like learn a lot, but the concepts that I want to internalize the most that I really want them to be like part of who I am and like, like really said, uh, become a set belief system of mine. I, I basically try to teach them and explain them. And that's why I also like to condense the idea because by condensing the idea, it also forces me to simplify things in my head and, and also get the message, um, for myself, really, like you just said it. And then also, obviously, I, I also I also like the, the aspect of teaching, though. I do like I do like having be, having my content be useful for other people. I do like the you know, like I have, I have friends who've written me and said, hey, like this helped me like really. And that's awesome. And like that, that's that feeling is like, fuck, man, like I, I'm not saying that I changed life. It's OK. But yeah. the fact that I could also at least help somebody some somehow, some way, like I really like it. I I. I love it. And again, going back to the topic that we were saying before, people that I knew, that I know, people, you know, the fact that people say that and write me a private message and to tell me these things, I, I love it. I, I, yeah, it really, it's, it's Gary Vee talks about it. it's my fuel. That's kind of like how it is for me as well. Yeah. So it's both sides. Yeah. Especially in self development or in such a personal way, right? Because I feel like, well, I have a, some friends that I would like to help in that way but with these things you kind of need to be careful because the way you speak about this you cannot sometimes you cannot just say man you you should improve this on yourself or you should pay more attention to this because it's such a touchy field or topic to someone and it doesn't really help I mean this sort of thing where you yourself need to, like we were saying, uh, discover for yourself and being able to get that connection with the content, providing value, that's part of, I guess, what we, we do, what we do, right? Yeah, that's why I, I go with the, basically, it's this video series called What I've Learned, right? So this is why I, I'm i not really telling people what to do. I'm literally just putting out there what I've learned. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I think that, you know, I'm not the only whatever, I'm 29, right? I'm not the only 29-year-old who's having these same questions as I have. So 
I try to make it relatable because I bet that a lot of people relate, you know, a, a lot of people go through the same things that we're going through, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I think that aspect is important as well. Make it realize that other people are, are, are also going through the same questions that you have. And, uh, that's why I, I try to make videos related, relatable. Yeah. Um, so other people can, can get something from it. Um, yeah. Because it's so, uh, yeah, such a personal topic that uh, being able to expose these ideas through video, I think, is one of the best forms because you are one on one conversation and then you can, like, private message, then you can, like, keep it, keep it, uh, not, like, not share to anyone, just keep it in the circle. And yeah, yeah I think Facebook for you is working well also because of that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, to say yeah. we're running a little bit out of time. So now I would say a few questions for the end, just that I will normally ask all the all the guests. So what's your book recommendation? Well, what's the book that really you feel like really gave you a lot of value so far and that you would like a friend or will give it away as a gift? I have so many. <laughs> um, what is the outcome? What 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 are you? What for though? Vote for what? And Anything. who is it? Who is who am I recommending it to? So it can be about your purpose in life and how somehow to tackle that problem, and it will be for uh, a friend that. You really didn't spend a lot of time with, but you know that he needs or she needs that book. Okay. I will say it's one of the first, um, actually this is a course, but I think it's also made a book, but it's the, one of the first books and courses I ever did in personal growth and it's personal power by Tony Robbins. Okay. Um, It's, 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 it's the compilation of everything that he knows and Tony Robbins knows a lot. He knows a lot. <laughs> um, and, um, it's, I like it because it's a, it's a day by day journey. You do, you do, you, you focus on mindsets and, and habits on specific topics on every single day. And then you do exercises and it's transforming, man. It's, it's, it's one of those courses that just shaped my life I, I I still implement a lot of things that he taught me in that course and I read that I did that years ago literally I was still in college when I did that it was a long time that was a long time ago seven years ago eight years ago okay um so personal power by Tony Robbins okay Tony Robbins okay and what would you say that is a the habits the most powerful habits that you would recommend someone to implement in their life? Journaling? <laughs> well, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a morning routine, having a morning routine. Okay. So um, and that itself is a habit. Um, and I would, I would incorporate journaling as the norm, number one morning routine that I have. Okay. Um, Yeah. And yeah. What's the and, thing? You know, yeah, yeah, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was going to ask the next question, so if you want to keep doing Oh, okay. Um, no, no, no. This is, I don't even know what I was going to say. Um, basically transforming 100%, especially if um, journaling is especially good if you feel somewhat lost mm -hmm. or you feel somewhat uncertain about certain things. You know, you, we were talking about decision making. Um, it's really, really, really going to help you yeah. to make things clear. Yeah. Yeah. And what would you say is your biggest struggle at a moment internally, like uh, things that you're going through life? It doesn't need to be too personal, but just in general, mm -hmm. your, your st current struggle. I was journaling about this just today, <laughs> just before our interview. Like I, I finished journaling like two minutes before we got in the call. Okay. Um, and so it's still fresh. And yeah, it's basically, and I was writing that 
I maybe I'm just putting up putting a bit too much pressure on myself. Um, it's just like I feel like I want to hustle 24/7, but sometimes I don't. <laughs> um, and it's 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 yeah. I I want to be all the time productive and like literally all the freaking time. Mm. Um, like not not single not one single second wasted, and um, that's being hard because it's not happening. I I, I actually. Um, time my productivity. I go. I was productive today, seventy percent of the time, eighty percent of the time, and um, you know the last day actually was like sixty something percent, seventy percent, um, and that that means that I worked like maybe eight to ten hours, which is I guess not bad, but okay. you know I'm awake what a number of a number of hours. You know I don't yeah. know how long I'm awake. I'm fourteen, sixteen. That means that I wasn't productive for four hours. You know. Yeah. Um, do you feel like that's so that, that is keeping you from because you like, attaching too too much value to that number? Is that yeah the struggle? Because yeah, so I it's a struggle because I I I came here to Bali with a with the mindset that you know I'm going to do something I'm going to build something and I'm only going to build it that is the proportion in which I'm going to build, I'm sorry, I'm going only to build this in proportion of how much time I'm, I allocate to it, yeah. right? And yeah. and I want to make sure that I put the most time on it. So that's that's a struggle. That's why I'm feeling insecure about it because I could be pouring, putting more time, mm. but I'm not. Mm. Like there's four extra hours in my day in which I could be working, but I'm like, whatever, you know, right now the friend's coming as well, but mm. I don't know. I just feel like I could be doing more. Yeah. And uh, as long as I, was, I feel yeah. like as long as you are doing your best and you feel like you are, which apparently you feel like you are not doing enough. So I would say that you should keep, strive to do more in your day. But as long as that becomes a, a burden and doesn't feel right anymore, then you can adjust. And uh, uh, circling back to the beginning of the conversation, is exactly that just making sure that you are in tune with your the way you work uh, your yeah internal resistance and then you can adjust so for right now you feel like you do more so do more when it becomes like oh I, I'm working too much and I need to exercise more I need to have more time for myself then you adjust but as long as you are in that mode of action then beautiful yeah yeah i you, you touch into something really important right now um, part of my morning routine i'll just add to this a part of from journaling i do the five minute journal um, okay. which is uh, composed of three things uh, what you're grateful for what would make your 10 your day 10 out of 10 and then the last thing is the set of affirmations um, and then one of the things that I write myself and I've been writing myself every single day for the past maybe month and month and a half is that I give it my all. Like I leave no fucking, no, I, there's nothing, there are no half done. Like I give it my best fucking all. I always go all, all in and, uh, yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent agree. Okay. So David, thank you for your precious time. <laughs> thank you for really, thank you. Diego. Really Thanks a lot, man for contacting me and you did the first step and I really uh, enjoy you for, for doing that. And it's a nice relationship being built right here. And I, I hope that you have the best luck for you or all the things that you want to achieve. And I will be sharing your stuff all the time, all your videos. If you <laughs> Thank, do you. A, Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Can do a uh -huh. YouTube collaboration. And I would say, like, just if you want to leave your final thoughts, if you want to plug your Facebook, just let people know how they can reach you. And yeah, go on. Yes, on Facebook and Instagram. So on Facebook is David dot Layton Z as in zebra, and on Instagram it's the same thing but without the dots. So David Layton Z at the end. Um, and I'll be soon also doing uh, YouTube. Uh, hopefully with you and this is exactly why I contacted you man like I saw your Edo Portal video and I just, I see it in you bro I recognize that and you you have the you know not only the spirit but also the hustle and and I really 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 
look up to that. That's like what you're doing. It's fucking awesome. So keep at it as well, man. Thank you. It means a lot. Thank you, bro. That's it. So thank you for being on the show, guys. Go check him out. <laughs> Facebook, eventually YouTube, Instagram. He can dance. This man can dance. Go check him out. <laughs> see you guys. Yeah. See you. Thank you. Bye. And that was my conversation with David Leyton Zuniga. If you want to see more of these interviews, please leave a comment down below or just leave a review in the audio version of this podcast. And let me know what you think. And that's it. The next episode is going to be about bullet journaling. I interviewed the creator and you're going to talk about what it means to journal and to have a system that you can keep organized. It's going to be very cool. So it will come out next week. So stay tuned. See you guys. Love. Bye.